He was the last surviving member of the Companions of the, Liber of the Liberation, an elite group of resistance fighters handpicked by Charles de Gaulle. Hubert Germain passed away in October at the age of 101 years old and will be buried in a national ceremony just outside of Paris this Thursday. While for many, his death marks the end of a chapter in French history and also opens up a new debate on how to keep the memory of the French resistance alive. Well, for more, I'm joined in the studio by Guillaume Piketty for Perspective. He is a French historian specialized in the Second World War. Thank you so much for joining us today, Guillaume. My pleasure. So, good morning. So for viewers who may not be familiar with it, can you tell us who exactly were the Companions of the Liberation? Well, they, um, they are the people who were, as you just said, uh, cho were chosen by de Gaulle. Um, he created that new uh, award in the, in the fall 1940, and the idea was to, to give that cross of the liberation to the very, very uh, uh, happy few who would have been extremely committed and who'd, who would have sacrificed themselves in a way or another in the service of the liberation of France. Uh, and in total, 1,038 people, which is not many, plus five collectivities, cities, towns, and, and 18 military units, so just a tiny little handful of people and, and units. So you mentioned that they were just a handful of people. Originally, Charles de Gaulle had, had planned to honor between two and 3,000 people of Companions at the Liberation, and the final number was much lower. Uh, what decided, what determined who ended up being recognized as a Companion and who didn't? Well, the, you know, there was a, a real process, so, uh, so people responsible uh, people in charge would, would suggest a name and then an inquiry would be made about that particular individual or that particular unit and eventually the decision would be made by de Gaulle. Hence the fact, as you said, that it was closed because when de Gaulle left power in January 1946, the order was closed. Did, was there a political element to it? Did they need to support Charles de Gaulle politically? No. Not, not a, no. No, no political element? The only thing was the liberation of France. Okay. Um, so now that there are no more survivors, what do you think will become of the Order of the Companions? Well, uh, hopefully it will survive, thanks to the people who are working within it, uh, thanks to historians, and also thanks to the, uh, to the uh, political power. Uh, a new law will be passed, uh, which will uh, make the French president the protector of the Order of the Liberation, uh, and so we can hope that uh, with these, uh, thanks to these three factors, the, the presidency, historians, and the order itself, it will survive, yes. But we need to explain and explain uh, as we do this morning. And can you maybe, before I forget, can you talk a little bit more about Hubert Germain in, in, in particular, what motivated him, why was, why was he recognized precisely? Well, Hubert Germain is, was uh, rather astonishing. Uh, he joined uh, he left France, metropolitan France, in, in 1940, in June 1940. He was 20, 20 years old. He went to England. The idea was to fight, whatever, um, wherever, to fight for the liberation of France. And then he met de Gaulle, and he ne left, never left him. Uh, and the other, th the other reason why he's so amazing uh, was the fact that he fought within three French units throughout the war, he managed to survive. He was wounded, but he managed to survive. To survive, and and he participated in many uh, famous uh, fights, battles. Birakim, for example, in in Libya, um, and for all these reasons, he was uh, selected to be a companion of the liberation. Okay, Professor, I'd like to move on a little bit more generally now. Historians estimate that there were between 300,000 and 500,000 French resistance in general. You have to imagine that that number includes kind of all variations of the political spectrum of socioeconomic classes. Um, how homogenous do you think that the companions of the Liberation were in that sense uh, compared to the resistance movement in general? You know, I tend to think that the order of the Liberation uh, happened to be, at the end of the war, a melting pot. Uh, a melting pot in which any uh, component of the French society, plus 50 foreigners, uh, were, were um, in, way, in a way embedded. Uh, so just a melting pot. Um, and so diverse political views, diverse... Uh, religiously, uh, in, terms, yeah, in terms of religion, in terms of uh, so socio-cultural background, in terms of political commitments. And by the way, many of them had a politi political commitment at the beginning of the war that had changed at the end of the war, thanks to the conversations, thanks to the experiences that they had lived uh, throughout the war within these units or within the entire resistance.
Okay, and uh, de Gaulle and his legacy is a pretty significant feature of French, French politics. I think that's even more visible this year ahead of next year's presidential election. Even not only de Gaulle, but just the, the, the legacy of the resistance of the Second World War in general seems to kind of always seep in to campaigns. Recently, the far-right pundit Eric Zemmour had accused resistance of even pushing France toward civil war, saying that the Vichy leader Philippe Pétain had actually saved Jews. Uh, what do you think that the discourse about uh, the resistance and more generally about the Second World War says about political and political divisions in France today? Well, you know, what, in my opinion, but it's only my opinion, I think that the resistance, um, the essence of the resistance should not be political. Uh, uh, and it's, it's the reason why so many people from so various uh, origins, political origins, are trying to grab the resistance. But the idea was that the values that were carried, that still are carried by the resistance, should not be political. Uh, values, uh, you know, um, um, the, the will to fight for, for, um, for humankind, uh, the will to fight for the liberation of the country, to fight against Nazism, fascism, uh, totalitarianism. Uh, this is not political. This is more than political. Uh, yeah. And why do you think, on, on de Gaulle specifically, why do you think it's so important for politi politicians across the political spectrum to link themselves to de Gaulle, especially if you consider that there are members of political parties that, you know, decades ago would not have supported de Gaulle at all, and now he's, he almost seems to be a kind of uniting figure for all of them? Well, because I think that's the de Gaulle. There are two de Gaulle's. There is the one in June 1940, and then, then there is the one in May, June 1958. And it's the first one to which all these politicians, all these people are, are trying to, 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 to be attached in a way. Uh, it's the, the, the goal of uh, free France, of the resistance, meaning of something that is uh, not political, that, that can reunite uh, uh, French, all French people. That's, I think this is what, why they all are trying to uh, find him again. Well, we'll see what becomes of it in the presidential <laughs> campaign season. Uh, thank you so much, Guillaume Piketty. Unfortunately, we have to wrap it up there. Thank you.